If things go sideways in society, most of us don't live in a place where you'd want to stay during that time period. If your plan is to bug out into the woods, you have a tent and some camping gear, but maybe not that much experience, you could be really blindsided if you get hit with foul weather. In this video, we're going to talk about three techniques that are critical to know if you plan on being in a tent out in the woods during foul weather that can make the difference between life and death. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Not waiting, better believe in your mind because it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Everybody, this is practice. I'm going to talk kind of quietly because I'm in a family campground right now. The boy and I are camping for a week, and uh, you know it's kind of impolite to talk particularly loud, especially in the, the morning hours. So I'm making some tea over our uh, little rocket stove that we have here. What I want to talk about in this video is uh, if you're ever camping or bugging out and it is going to be really rainy, which is you know certainly a possibility wherever you might be, uh, how to kind of try to keep your tent uh, from getting you know wet on the inside because this week. It has uh, been forecast to be super, super rainy. Uh, we had this trip planned for months, and you know the whole summer has been pretty rainy. And this week in particular was looking really, really wet. We had a big thunderstorm come through last night. It went from like uh, you know one minute it was you know, totally fine, and then five minutes later, absolute downpour and lightning and wind and everything. So it's been a kind of a challenging week, but it hasn't been bad because we've been prepared for it. So I want to give you a little tour around uh, this campsite and show you what we've done to try to make it so that we don't get wet on the inside of the tent. So let's kind of pop around here. One thing you might notice uh, in the background is that there's a highway uh, sound and uh, it's one of the funny things about when I go camping is that it's actually, uh, there's, there's more civilization when I tend to go camping uh, at these family campgrounds than, uh, than back home. Uh, we uh, Once we get back home we get back to the peace and quiet of the of the forest. So uh, so this is the uh, campsite that we, we set up. We've got our tent, we've got our little cook area, we've got a couple of tarps overhanging it. Now the tarps make it obviously so that the, uh, the areas that we're covering with the tarps don't get wet. Um, and one important reason to have a, a tent, uh, I'm sorry, a tarp over a tent, uh, is that these rain flies that are made for, for tents, they, they rarely work very well, at least in my experience. I've been uh, uh, you know, backpacking and camping for a long time. When you buy a, a new tent, it'll usually have a, a rain fly that'll be good for maybe a couple of years. Um, but after that, it starts developing leaks up in the top. And, you know, the thing starts leaking, uh, you know, pretty pretty soon there after that. But even before that, uh, if you want to look around kind of the edge here, this here is the rain fly material. And underneath, right there, that's the tent. Now, even when this thing is working perfectly, the water comes down the side, and a lot of times it'll be kind of splattering. It'll splash up onto the inside uh, tent area there. Now, it doesn't make the tent terribly wet, but it certainly kind of makes the edges a little bit wet. So, that's one reason why I like throwing a tarp over our tent, because even if you have a brand new tent, and even if the rainfly works pretty well, you're always kind of getting that kind of spatter effect. So that's one line of a, a defense that we have, is just taking a tarp and putting it up over the entire tent area. And the way that we do that is uh, I'll use a couple of poles. Here's one pole here that we've cut and it goes into the ground there. And I brought these from home. Up at the very top, it's got a little, uh, a little screw stuck into the top. And uh, that just goes through the hole in the, uh, the grommet inside of the tent. And then I've got a line that runs down and, uh, and stakes into the ground. Uh, so we did that for this corner. The other corners are uh, being held up by, uh, this one's just tied to a tree over here. And we've got a, a simple loop knot here that we kind of pulled up through and I just threw a tent stake through and it's grabbing that way. The uh, opposite corner over there is, uh, is uh, being held up by the same uh, method. And then I'll just kind of show you our last corner over there. We just simply tied up to a tree using using that same method. Uh, now, one other thing that's really important, uh, especially if you're on any kind of a sloped site, is to do some trenching. And I'm going to show you the tools that I use for doing trenching. Now, this site here, it's a little hard to tell in video because, you know, depending on how you hold the camera, it can be like, oh, we're 
tenting on the side of a mountain or it's incredibly level. Um, the way that this uh, site is, is it's a little bit like this. There's kind of a slope that goes down in this direction and the water flows in that direction. When we got here, uh, we could even see evidence of it because uh, we could see, we can see right here, there's kind of a evidence that there's been some flow going through here. So the water kind of comes up from this high area and flows down through here. So when we were placing the tent down, we did a trench around the tent. So the idea is that as the water comes down, it'll go down into this trench and it's gonna go around your tent. It's essentially kind of like making a moat to go around, uh, around your tent. And this trench goes all the way around this side. And then it goes down the hill over here. And you can really see last night how much uh, water went through there. I'm not sure if it shows that much on camera, but this is very clearly you know, water flowing through this area with all these stretch marks. So we had a lot of water kind of flowing down the hill in that direction. And same thing over on this side. And you can see the grass kind of pulled over here as the water came down here and, uh, and flowed down on this side. As you're doing the trenching, you, uh, you naturally tend to have some extra dirt. So as you uh, dig the trench out, you want to pop the dirt up onto the uh, side facing your tent and that makes kind of like a, a dike on the other side of the uh, of the trench and that really helps to keep it from overflowing and uh, last night like I said we had a, a real deluge and this trench kept us kept us totally dry now the tool that I use for doing the trench you know you can honestly use anything you just use a stick that you find on site you can use a rock I was talking to a guy yesterday right here at this campground he uses he used a camp uh, like a, a lawn chair that he just happened to have because he wasn't very prepared. So you don't always, ha always have to have the right tools. But this is a tool that I really like. This is a sawed shovel, and uh, I'm going to open this thing up and uh, show you guys how it works. All right, so inside the little carrying case, you get this. And uh, there's lots of different companies that make these. I, I like the sawed company because I feel like they make a lot of really uh, well-made tools. Uh, so that's why I went with this one. But there's lots of companies that make similar things. If you're interested in this particular shovel, I'll just put a link down in the description below. To this one but i've had this one for many years and it held up really well now it has a little screw that allows you to open the thing up like this and uh, by tightening or loosening this it makes it so you can you know fold the thing back up again now it can be used in a number of different ways you can use just the shovel like this on the other side there's a kind of like a pick that you can use uh, or, uh, and you can have it in either of those orientations, like that, or like that, or you can uh, do it like this, and tighten it up like that. And this is actually kind of the way that I tend to prefer to, to do it. Tighten that up, and that tightens up all these, oh, if, I, if I do it properly, there we go. It tightens the whole thing up. And I kind of like this because then I can kind of grab onto this side and I can use it to kind of like, uh, you know, trench a little uh, a hole like that. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's about all there is to it, but it's a really nice tool. Uh, you know, the ones that SOG makes is, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, really strong. I know a lot of times people have these like tactical shovels and you screw together a bunch of handle pieces. Uh, I know a Canadian prepper has one of those that he's, you know, swears by and he says it's really great. I've been given a bunch of those by a lot of different companies to test and uh, they, they've all been real garbage for me. So if you're going to get one of those tactical multi-tool shovels where you, you screw together all of the pieces, at least in my experience, um, you have a better chance of it being a piece of crap than it being something decent. And uh, this, what I like about it, is it's, it's awfully small when it, uh, when it breaks all down and it's going to it back up. It's a really, really small package. It's a lot smaller than all of those, you know, tactical multi-tool shovels, and uh, and it's really, really uh, rugged. Uh, you know, it, one of those uh, multi-tool shovels it claimed that it could be used as an axe. <laughs> I didn't think that it was going to be possible. He, yeah, here's a here's a link to that video if you want to look at that thing. Um, you know, 
a lot of times uh, tools will make claims about what they can do and you know um, <laughs> you got to take it with a grain of salt and you know test your stuff out before you use it this thing I've tested it works really well you know a, a lot of other stuff um, companies make claims kind of hoping that you're never actually going to have to use a thing or you're just never going to feel like using it and uh, you know you'll never find out that you got swindled and things kind of a piece of garbage this it's, it's worked for me for many many years I re in fact here, here's the evidence whenever you see somebody you know doing a review on uh, uh, you know YouTube for anything and the thing was brand new you gotta have some questions about that look we've got some, some scuff marks on the bottom here there's some rust you know going on here you know this is something that's actually used like the, all the paint on this front edge is all gone now that's what you should really be looking for when uh, you know somebody is uh, uh, you know talking about you know whether something works or not on YouTube is look, look and see whether the thing is it looks like it's actually ever been used in fact if I was going to give you advice on this pick here would you want to take my advice on that pick? Because look, look at that. Does that look like it's ever been used? I honestly don't ever really use the pick. I think it looks like maybe I used it like once or twice. But, you know, clearly, you know, I'm a guy you want to take advice about when it comes to using the shovel part of this tool. Not about using the pick, because clearly, you know, I just don't use the pick very much, other than it's like a handle, like I mentioned earlier. So, uh, so yeah, if you're going to be doing uh, any kind of camping, if you want have the idea that uh, you want to have camping supplies ready to be used for a, a bug out kind of situation make sure you have some kind of a trenching tool you know again you can use like a, like a rock or a stick from the environment around you and that's fine and you can make do with that but this thing works uh, works really easy really quickly uh, and it takes a job that you know if you're doing it with a stick it would be like probably like three or four times as long and you know it'd be just kind of like a pain in the butt and it makes it happen really really quickly and at least for this, uh, this little fog shovel it's a really small package. It's like, I don't know, it's a couple of pounds. So it doesn't add a lot of bulk or weight to your packs, and I think it's definitely worth it. That's it. Definitely get out there and do some camping. It can be really fun, and it can be really challenging, and if your plan is, if you ever needed to bug out, you would do camping, you really want to practice it ahead of time to find out that it's like, oh, you know, I should have a shovel instead of a lawn chair <laughs> to do trenching, or just find out that you need to do trenching. A lot of people don't even realize you need to do that. I, I go around here and you know the campground and there's a lot of people and they don't have any trenches around their tents and there's like a downhill slope and I know last night they got drenched the water went right underneath their tent which brings me to one other thing that you guys should probably know about I'm gonna pick up the camera here and that is underneath your tent it's a really good idea let's see if I can get a good look at it here it's a really good idea to have a tarp for underneath your tent uh, and that makes it so that if there is any ground wetness, it's not going to get up in there. And you'll notice that you can't see the tarp, and that's the point. Where is the tarp? See the blue tarp in there? A lot of people, they hear, uh, you know, uh, from YouTube people or something like that, that you should put a tarp underneath your tent. So they do it, and they don't really understand exactly what they're doing. And a lot of times, a lot of times, that they'll have the tarps extending like several feet out from underneath their tent. And you know what that does is it makes it so rainwater falls down, hits the, t the, the tarp, and then flows right underneath their tent. It's like, it's almost like they designed a catchment system to make sure that water would get underneath their tent as much as possible. Because <laughs> if they didn't have a tarp, uh, then the water would hit the ground and, you know, much of it would absorb down into the ground. But if you put a tarp under your tent and it overextends off to the sides, you're making it so that none of the water absorbs into the ground and it all is going to flow right down underneath your tent. So if you're setting up, make sure you have a tarp for under the tent. It's good to have a tarp for over the tent, even if you got a new rain fly. No, they're not perfect, and this is going to keep you a lot drier. And definitely, make sure you have a trench on the uphill side of your tent so that when the water is coming through, it gets redirected and goes around you. Hope you found this video helpful. Get out camping, and thanks for watching. Hey, YouTube preppers. Remembering to bring a shovel when you go camping is important, but do you know what's even more important? remembering to bring everything else. In this video over here, I talk about my modular bag system that I use both for bugging out and for camping that ensures I don't forget anything.